Today we're going to be tying up a net builder caddis. Got a size 12 hook here in my vise. It's a nice scud hook. Some .015 lead here. We're just going to want a good um, amount of lead here right in the center of the, the fly. We'll just help it get down to the bottom. The net builder caddis um, builds a nice little net that it uses to catch the material it needs to, to live and eat. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, and they do tend to be a little bit bigger, so a size 12 is not out of the range. And you can see I'm just doing the helicopter to break off the lead on both ends here. And then once I've done that, I can compress that. And once I have that compressed, I'm going to move it to about where I want it, which is going to be right there, right in the center-ish of the, of the pattern here. And with that, we can go ahead and um, do what we usually do, which is start our thread. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm using an uh, 8 size um, 18, or odd, 18 odd, I should say. Um, nano silk, so it's not going to leave much of a footprint. I don't mind um, starting it behind the eye. So I'm going to get that nice and secured and in place there, and then I'll come in with my scissors. We'll cut out that tag end. And you can see how that lead just um, freely is going to move around. So I'm going to put it back. It already slid back on me a little bit. So you'll watch and see, I'll stick my finger here and on the back end of that lead. And that's going to just help us make sure it doesn't slide too much backwards as we're tying in these thread wraps before we have it secured. Because that lead, as you've seen, has a tendency to want to kind of slip around. It'll slide all over the hook. So once I've got that um, all the way through to the back, I'll go ahead and take one more pass through it. And these thread wraps should just sink right into the thread, into the lead itself. Um, not too worried about it moving at this point. And I'm not going to try to cover it with thread, so don't use a million thread wraps to try to cover up and hide this lead. We've got some scud, um, some scud, south scud dubbing that we will use on this net builder caddis that will um, certainly take care of covering up the lead wraps there. So I'm going to take my thread back up and I'm going to leave it hanging right there in the middle. So next I'm going to tie in some Z yarn um, in white. I've already got myself a, a piece. We're going to tie that in right here at the center. Our goal here is just to keep this on the top of the shank of the hook. So we'll take a thread wrap or two to um, secure it down. Make sure it's on the center on the top. It looks good. Um, we're going to have just a little stubby white tail here. So this is going to be cut off anyway. So let's just get that secured to our hook here. And I want to just bring this back to where I want the body of this um, net builder caddis to start. I'm going to come pretty deep around the back end, uh, the bend of the hook here. And that's going to be fine. That's where we will start our abdomen, if they have one. I'm not quite sure that this bug actually has an abdomen, but if it does, that's where it would start. I'm going to take the balance of this stuff, and we'll, this stuff, this Z yarn, and we'll clip it off. The next material I'm going to tie in is going to be some monofilament regular fishing monofilament except this happens to be uh, like a 3x tippet material um, from a few years back I, I try to change out my tippet material at least every other year if not every year just to keep it from getting brittle so let's go ahead and tie this in on the lens side of the hook here got a fun little piece of the yarn that just has decided it wants to be out of place once I get a few thread wraps in place, I'm going to just pull on that 3X mono a little bit until it go gets to about the front of the lead or the where the lead is um, closer to the eye. We'll go ahead and we'll bring this also back down and it, we'll want to tie it back to the point where we're going to start with our dubbing here. So 
is going to be our ribbing um, for the fly. So we have that in place. Next we're going to use some thin skin and we're just going to use a nice green with some spots in it. Um, I've already cut off a piece here. Um, you want your piece to be, you know, about half the length of the gap there. You can see that's a, a pretty good measurement. Always keep in mind um, that this is on a backing. I'm probably the only uh, person who didn't know that when I first started tying uh, a long time ago and tied it in with the backing on it and was like, huh, this is not good material to use. But it actually, as you can see, separates from the backing. Just in case there's anyone like me out there that does things wrong quite frequently. Um, gonna tie this in. I want this also over the center of the hook. So go ahead and get that kind of right in place with my thread. From there, I'm gonna go back down to our starting point. While I pull that material a little bit backwards, stretch it, it is stretchy. Uh, but the most important thing is let's keep this thing over the top of the center of the hook. And once again, we're gonna just go back down to where we're gonna start the body on this fly. If anyone ever watches any of these, you can let me know. Does is does a net catcher caddis have an abdomen or is it just a body? I don't know. So for the body of the fly, I'm just gonna turn to some South Scud dubbing. I'm gonna use a, a lighter green color. It's a size 12, so I'll be fairly generous with this. In terms of grabbing a pretty good a pretty good amount of it out and I want this tapered at both ends so it's skinnier on this end skinnier on the center and fat more in the middle kind of like a football once I've got that pulled out of my dispenser I'm just gonna dub that onto my thread here most of it anyway I'm going to give myself a little bit of thread just to allow me to travel back down to that point where we want to start the fly. And then I'm just going to work my way up, tightening it kind of as I go along. I may take a few wraps back over just to make sure I have a really nice um, chunky middle section here. And hopefully you can see we've built that kind of taper and that's what we wanted to do. So there we go. We've cut our, our dubbing on. Our lead is completely covered up. So one of the unique features of the Net Builder um, Caddis is it does have kind of a dark leggy um, front to it. So I'm gonna take my thread back up a little bit through that dubbing. And I'm gonna turn to a piece of black peacock, not peacock, but ostrich hurl or plume and I'll take a hurl off of it I've already stripped just like I do with a hackle just a tiny little bit off I'm gonna tie it in right where that hackle starts where that plume starts wants to fight me a little bit. That's okay, I'll fight back. Okay, so we're gonna secure that ostrich plume hurl down a little bit as we get towards the eye. And it does have a stem that's sticking out a little bit further than I want it to, so I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my scissors and cut that little bit off. 
Um, if you've ever hiked with an ostrich hurl, um, one thing to keep in mind, and I'm sure you know if you've used it, is it's very delicate in terms of um, it'll break very easily. So you'll want to be careful um, when you're using it. Okay, so once you've got your ostrich connected to your hackle pliers, you're going to stand it straight up. We're going to take one wrap and make sure we get one full wrap here in the back. And then we're going to move it forward. And these can be somewhat open wraps. These don't need to be touching necessarily like we do with a, a regular hackle. You can see my thread is wanting to travel along with me because that's what happens when you turn your vise as it comes unwrapped a little bit. So I can just back that off a little bit. Okay, so once I've got it about there, we're going to go ahead and throw our thread over the stem of this ostrich. Go ahead and take a wrap or two over the top of that stem. Going to take a wrap or two, or just actually one right in front. I can release that hurl without worrying about losing it. But I will come in now and I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut this hurl off as close as I can to where it is to attach to the hook. Once we have that in place, we'll grab, go ahead and grab this uh, thin skin and pull it right over the center of our hook here. Maybe put your finger down to kind of hold it in place while you do that. Let's get a thread wrap or two around that and just secure it into place. And sometimes I'll kind of pull on it, stretch it a little bit. We'll take a couple of wraps over the top of it, just to secure that in place. And then I'm going to take a thread wrap or two. I'm going to pull that thin skin backwards and let's get a wrap or two around the eye of the hook. Once we've done that, I can come in with my scissors and usually with the scud back, you're going to want to take a couple of cuts because it does surround the body. couple thread wraps now just to make sure we've got it secure. Now I'm going to grab my monofilament. It's been sitting back there waiting to be used and it's time. So we're going to use this to create a nice ribbing on here. The nice thing about this monofilament is you can pull it really tight. That's what you really want to do. Pull it nice and tight as you go up. And that's going to create a nice segmentation on this body. So I'm trying to take fairly even wraps of the material as we come up and over the top. And as I get close to the partridge hurl, I'm actually going to take some wider um, turns so there's a little bit more of a gap there. Pull that tight. Once you get to the front, let's go ahead and just take a few wraps over the top of that monofilament so we keep that locked and get that locked into place. Take a couple of wraps on this side of it as well. Turn my vise a little bit sideways so I can see where that's attached. So you can see that I've <coughs> kind of reoriented my um, 
hook here in the vise. I've tilted it up a little bit to make this a lot more even up here. It'll just make our whip finishes e easier. Try to keep them from sliding off the front end of our hook. We'll just take a, you know, four or five turn whip finish here. Just to kind of finish this guy off. that I'm going to go ahead and pull tight on my thread using this cutting tool that's on the end of my whip finisher. Really like using that, it just cuts it off a little bit closer. So with that we've got a few kind of finishing items to do. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this tail here, grab as much of that Z yarn as you can get your fingers on, pull it fairly tight. And we just want a stubby little tail, so I'm not going to leave much. Um, just about like that. So we have this nice little stubby tail. And I'm also going to grab a, du a dubbing brush. And I'm going to brush out some of this dubbing. Um, to create something that looks a little bit like legs. And because this is uh, that kind of dubbing, it will some of it will come out. So I'm just turning my vise a little bit so I can get to the other side as well and the underneath. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a black Sharpie. And those two last segments around where those ostrich hurls are, I'm going to go ahead and just blacken those a little bit with my Sharpie so they're not the same green color. Hopefully you can see that. And with that, we're done with the Net Builder Caddis. Um, great pattern to use. Um, get rid of some fuzz there. Uh, really fun to tie um, and a very effective pattern. So throw a hook in your vise and give this one a go.